Welcome back to Creating Your Life. This is Episode 3, Blind Spots, Part 2. We're going to watch another video. This one is a bit more famous, so it's more likely that you've seen this one before. But it shows something that few videos do, and uh, let's, let's look at it again, or if it's new to you, I think you'll find this fascinating. Count how many times the players wearing white pass the ball. The correct answer is 16 passes. Did you spot the gorilla? For people who haven't seen or heard about a video like this before, about half miss the gorilla. If you knew about the gorilla, you probably saw it. But did you notice the curtain changing color or the player on the black team leaving the game? Let's rewind and watch it again. Here comes the gorilla, and there goes a player, and the curtain is changing from red to gold. Okay, so I think uh, most of you who have seen this probably did not notice that the curtain changed colors, or that the black the player in black left. This is uh, called the monkey business illusion. You can search for it on YouTube. What's very fascinating about this is it gives one more example about how if you focus in one area, your mind tends to start screening out things in other areas. So again, this is what magicians know. They know that if I can get you to focus over here, I can do something on the opposite side and you're not going to see it. So it's a matter of getting you fascinated or focused on something. Con artists do the same thing. If I can plant an image in your mind of the riches that you're going to get, all you have to do is give me $1,000. I will invest this for you. Or I can um, do some kind of pyramid scheme and, and get you to see the end result of what's possible. I can get you to part with your money for an image in your head that's not real. If you want to understand how powerful images are, the next time you're just casually talking to a friend, um, just suddenly glance at their shoulder and go, is that a spider? <laughs> and see what happens. You know, just with imagery, we can pr generate profound reactions just by planting images in people's heads. Here's another way of looking at it, and it has to do with experts. Uh, this is the story of Cliff Young. Cliff Young um, was a gentleman in Australia, and every year in Australia, marathoners know this uh, if they're world class there's a marathon between Sydney and Melbourne. It's about 600 kilometers long. It, it, and back in the 80s, it took you know upwards to seven and a half to eight days to run this marathon. And so it required a lot of training. And professional marathoners and their coaches, after working it out a while, they, they kind of honed in on the idea that if you're going to be able to complete this race and have a chance of winning, you run 18 hours and sleep six. Run 18 hours and sleep six. This is what the experts said. One day, uh, Cliff Young shows up. Cliff Young was in his 60s. He was dressed in overall, overalls and galoshes. He looked a bit like a hobo. <laughs> he didn't look like a marathoner. He didn't look like he had the training. And so the marathoners there, when they saw him, they went up and asked him, so what are you doing here? Uh, he said, well, I'm here to run the marathon. They said, well, have you ever run a marathon before? And he said, no. And they asked him, well, did you have any training? And he said, well, on my farm, I have some cattle and I have a dog and I don't have any horses, but I run around and I gather them and move them. And this is his idea of training. So it was clear he didn't have the expertise necessary to run this race. 
and the marathoners essentially just said, okay, well, good luck to you. Hope you uh, hope to see you sometime at the end of the race. And they set off. Now, Cliff Young didn't have any special running gait or anything. He just shuffled along like anybody else. He wasn't particularly fast. But what happened is Cliff Young became a sensation because he not only won the race, he cut a day and a half off the record time. Now think about that for a minute. What was it that Cliff Young knew that the marathoners didn't? Or more precisely, what did the marathoners know that got in their way of understanding what was necessary to win the race? You see, they were trained that you run 18 hours and sleep six, run 18 hours and sleep six. Cliff Young never had that kind of expert training. And so he didn't have that image in his head that this was the pattern he had to follow. So what happened? While other marathoners were sleeping, he just kept on running. It was a race. You just keep running. He may have taken an hour to rest here and there, but he just kept shuffling along and ended up winning the race. And so you can go on Wikipedia, read about it. He was a sensation in Australia. Um, it goes to show, though, that experts can be wrong. In fact, experts can create blind spots. You may have remembered that there was a point where everybody regarded the four minute mile to be impossible to break, that a human being could not run a mile in four minutes or less. Um, but at one point that barrier was broken and what happened in the year after a bunch of people passed it, suddenly that image that was in everybody's head broke up, that mold that was holding them back, that limitation. And suddenly a lot of people were doing it. You may remember back in the 80s, the uh, Space Shuttle Challenger disaster, when NASA experts were saying, well, um, yeah, it was, it was cold when we launched, but it had nothing to do with these O-rings. They were functioning correctly. They were these little kind of gasket-like rings that were designed to keep things separate so that they wouldn't explode. Well, Richard Feynman, a famous scientist who you might know, um, he was a Caltech professor and he was famous for inventing quantum chromodynamics. Richard Feynman was very practical. He didn't believe in experts per se. I, the way he would frame it is science is the belief in the ignorance of experts. Science does not hold itself hostage to experts, in other words. So while the NASA scientists are talking and saying, yes, well, you know, we're, it's our expert opinion that these O-rings would not have failed, that they would have kept their elasticity, Richard Feynman took the glass of ice water he had there, dropped one of the O-rings in, and then demonstrated by squeezing it that it lost its flexibility when, it, when temperature started hitting freezing. Um, you can see this on YouTube as well, searching Feynman and Challenger disaster. So it just goes to show you that experts not only can be wrong, they can create blind spots. They can put things in your head that hold you back. So here's something else. What have the experts been telling you all of your life? What is it that you've been made to believe that isn't true? What kind of limitations have been imposed on you that you can break through on? Could your imagination be held back from what you're capable of achieving? Well, that's all for now. Next episode, we'll talk about the imagination. What is it and what difference does it make? Also, on Amazon, you can get my book, Creating Your Life, What You Should Have Learned as a Teen.